let's take a look at some of the string methods that perform comparisons. The most fundamental comparison for two string objects is to determine whether they contain the same text. You'll remember that we can't use the equals equals operator two equals signs to do this as that compares the values of the reference variables and effectively tells us if both variables refer to the same string in memory. Instead, we use the equals method, E-Q-U-A-L-S, providing a second string as the argument. Equals then tells us if the argument string is the same as the string that we called the equals method on. That is, if the text that it represents is the same. As well as the regular equals method that compares the contents of one string against another string, string can compare its contents with a char sequence or a string buffer. This is done using two overloaded content equals methods. Regular equals does not consider upper and lowercase letters equivalent, but string also provides equals ignore case, which does exactly what it says. And we can use the isEmpty method to ask if a string is the empty string, that is, if it is of zero length. We can look for single characters or sequences of text inside a string using the methods index of and last index of. These are very like the string builder methods, but with the addition of the ability to look for single chars. Like the string builder methods of the same names, you can start the search from the beginning of the string or from an offset. String provides several methods that tell if a given string contains a particular sequence of text starts with, ends with, and contains, all do exactly what their names suggest. The starts with with an offset doesn't actually start the search at the beginning, but at the offset. So I suppose you could argue that one's name is a little bit wrong. There are also two methods called region matches that compare substrings of the primary string and of an argument string. You get to choose which region of each string is compared and whether to ignore case. The final methods we will consider are the compare to and compare to ignore case methods. These allow us to put words in a dictionary type order. The ordering is defined by the Unicode standard. 
The result is positive, negative or zero depending on the result of the comparison. So the sign of the result indicates if the argument string should be before or after the invocation string in dictionary order. A zero result indicates that the two strings are the same. But if that's what you wanted to know, you probably should have used equals or equals ignore case rather than one of these methods. That's it. There are some methods we've not looked at, notably methods involving things called code points and regular expressions. Code points extend the range of characters that Java can represent, and regular expressions provide ways to look for patterns that aren't totally specified. Things like any uppercase letter followed by any number of lowercase letters followed by either a space or a new line. Patterns, in effect. But neither of these things are necessary for the exam we're discussing. So we'll leave them out and consider ourselves completed on the objective creating and manipulating strings.